The following is an Ice on Mars presentation. Today we're going to talk about a movie that really should have been called Wide Retriever, but instead it's Air Bud Golden Receiver. What the fuck? Um. Hey everyone, this is Michael T. Bradley. This is Marisha Parker. And we are here to talk about, that's right, the sequel to Air Bud. Air Bud, why, Golden Receiver. I still, can't, I still <laughs> can't get it right because it just seems so natural. To, I, I guess Right, I, I think your version is better anyway. I guess the assumption is that a wide receiver makes it sound like he puts on a lot of weight. And yeah. maybe it's just going to be him like sitting around eating doggy biscuits. So, brief plot synopsis of this film before we move to the WTF moment. Most of the movie, you've got the protagonist, but you've got the protagonist's mother, and most of the movie is about her love life and his football games, and that's that's about it. There's also some villains in there somewhere, but they barely play a part at all, and so basically if you want to watch a, a, a movie about football games that you don't actually care about the outcome, this is this is a good one. Also... Buddy plays football now. Right, right. All of all of a sudden. And Buddy plays some basketball too. For for like a second. Well, I there there was a good amount of it at the beginning. I mean, we get to see one of the buddies get smashed on the nose with a basketball, and that's really what I'm here for. Um, <laughs> yes. The uh, which, by the way, there are four buddies in this movie. Did you notice that? I I didn't notice that. Yeah, yeah. Four dogs played Buddy because that's how many it took. Now, how I, did you notice that? It's it's just it's in the end credits. Oh, okay. So, yeah. No, I didn't notice. I assume that three dogs died during the filming of this <laughs> movie, and that's how many they had to go through because the Air Bud series is cursed. <laughs> All right, Marisha, you want to start out the WTF moments again? Here we go. The, our what the fuck moments from this film. Oh, okay, and, the, and I should preempt uh, mine by saying my moments are just going to be specific lines that were uttered in the film. A very noisy, very visible ice cream chuck used for stealth and other such criminal activities. Said to a dog, not now, boy, my head hurts. <laughs> Vanilla pudding everywhere, in the doctor's office, in just... Every, everywhere you don't want it to be, even as a callback to the last movie. What do you say, kid? You mind if I grab some wood? That's said by his coach, by the way. His coach loves fun and food. Fun and yes, food. Yes, that seems to be the two things that he cares about most. Will not stop eating in this film. Cannot stop eating, even to get one line out, I don't think. It's, it, yeah, I don't think so. They they made a specific point of having him eat in every single scene. Right, and I don't know if it was meant to be funny or tragic. Possibly both. Possibly. Po possibly both. Yes. So uh, you know, as 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 everybody expected, you you get a movie with Air Bud, and it's called Golden Receiver or whatever the hell, and it's um. It, it's 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 Buddy starts playing football, and that's kind of the thrust of the kids' half of the movie. Uh, Josh finds out that he has, of course, a killer arm, and of course, on like day one of football practice, the quarterback is I don't know shot by a sniper or some damn thing, <laughs> something to take him out of commission. Right, and and so Josh, the backup quarterback, has to go in, and then you know, as always happens, Buddy become you know th there's a point in the film where josh is being sad about his dad and he realizes that buddy can play football and then act two begins and buddy is playing football i thought i thought it was just in incredibly obvious that the that the football and the entire story about the football was was entirely unnecessary except that they needed to make a movie about it well it, it I, I mean, it's kind of one of two ways, right? Either the story about Josh accepting his new father figure, because that's kind of the the um, uh, emotional arc of the movie, is the, the uh, father figure, uh, you know, his mom's dating again, that whole thing. So mm -hmm. either that is unnecessary and it's a football movie with a dog, or... All the football is unnecessary, and it's a movie about a, a boy growing up to some extent, right? Right. And, you know, I did actually get that kind of vibe from the movie that it was sort of a coming-of-age story, and some of that had to do with, like, coming to terms with his family situation or whatever, but there was also 
I, I got a, there were a couple scenes that seemed like it was this boy blooming into manhood sort of, sort of feel. It was, it was weird enough that it seemed a little out of place with everything else that was going on, but I, I don't know. I, I, in general, get a really strange feeling from these kids' movies <laughs> where we're watching young men <laughs> do all sorts of stuff, especially... Like, the scene that really stuck out to me as oddly homoerotic, I know you're talking about something a little different, but homoerotic was when the one kid who's, I don't know football positions, but the one who has the ball during the, the hut hut hike stuff, and he, like, points to his ass, and he's like, no, Josh, over here. <laughs> <laughs> because Josh goes and stands behind the wrong person, he's so nervous, and so... It, to me, that was a little, a little creepy, a little odd. Um, just in... you could, I mean, we could, we could get into a whole thing though about how football in general just kind of uh, exhibits that sort of, that sort of thing. <laughs> football homoerotic? There's nothing. That's crazy, Marisha. That's I don't see that at all. <laughs> I, I thought it was interesting how at first they, uh, Josh doesn't want to let Buddy play. He's like, hey, that's awesome that you can catch the ball and run around and memorize plays. But, uh, but the, uh, but you could get hurt. And so they put some padding on him. And my immediate thought is, well, what if somebody actually tackled him? Wouldn't that like nearly kill him? And that is like, well, and then that, that's actually what happened, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, that is like the, 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 uh, uh, the big, oh my God, how are they going to take care of this moment in the climax? <laughs> because, because right. the climax keeps starting and stopping. They have to like find this way for the team to, stand up for themselves, but also get Buddy back, but also have an oh shit moment, and it's literally somebody finally in an entire season of football decides, hey, the dog's running with the ball, I'll tackle it, you know? <laughs> like, I right. guess we're accepting it as a legal player, that means you can tackle it. And of course, I mean, even these, They're I don't know, 12 to 15 year old kids tackling a dog, it's going to nearly kill the dog. But, you know, he was totally okay. Of course he was. Right, right, right. But, it, it, but the thing that made it, like, I, I barely remembered that was the climax, though, because, the like, most of the movie was that entire conflict of them trying to win a football game just over and over and over and over again. I, I It had way... I mean, I know it was a football game, but it had... They... they the football game was clearly filler for at least some of it. Yeah, though again, I don't. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if filler is the right word when you're making a movie about a dog who plays football. You know. Okay, I mean, maybe maybe a better example of the filler would be the the villains or whatever they were. <laughs> yeah, I seriously felt as if the uh, Boris and Natasha as the bad guys was literally put in there because they had to think of some reason for Buddy not to be there during the final. That is literally the only function they serve in the entire movie. And it's it's kind of, I thought it was kind of bizarre. Like they, they, they put these antagonists in the movie and then the only role they play is they make Buddy be gone for like a little bit in the movie. And then... <laughs> And then they don't even need the protagonist or anybody to to help Buddy get out. They, they he just escapes on his own and then goes back to the football game, and that is the extent of the antagonist story. Right, and it's it's Nora Dunn playing uh, the Natasha character. I mean, they're called something else, but they are essentially if Boris and Natasha were you know deciding to open a circus uh, with questionable methods which i think you had a point to make about but yeah they they are they're worthless and just really feel like uh, uh shoehorned in cartoon villains and yeah buddy escapes not on his own he has the help of that monkey who deserves his oh, own goddamn true. series the, yeah yeah the monkey was driving vans operating cranes or no buddy operated the crane the monkey uh, used the opened up the fish guts thing which, oh, right. That was really gross. Yeah, that was pretty horrible. I mean, these people are tortured by animals. And <laughs> there honestly was a moment there where I, I, I just got done a couple of days ago recording the episode where we talked about Puppet Master 3, which ends with somebody using hooks to make a living puppet out of someone for the climax. And I right. honestly for a moment thought that's where this was going because Buddy operates the hooks <laughs> Uh, this this like chain with a hook on the end, and it swings toward Boris, or Popov, 
as apparently he's called. And I was like, oh, Jesus, is Buddy going to string him up by, like, a tendon? <laughs> Luckily, that didn't go there, but it, it almost did. It was pretty pretty horrifying. But, you know, they, they really didn't get that much screen time because they didn't have anything to do. All we knew about them was that they were kidnapping high-profile animals to put in this zoo that supposedly people are going to come, like, pay to see the animals, although we didn't actually see any any customers or anything. And, and stealing a dog with an ice cream truck to put into their exotic zoo with all these other animals like bears and monkeys and everything. And they had to go kidnap a dog. Right. Hi, yeah, because they, they didn't have a headliner. And I was like, that monkey could headline, for God's sake. That monkey could probably do your taxes as well. I honestly, at one point, because they were being so sidelined, there was one point where two kids come up like a brother and a sister come up and ask for ice cream and those kids were awesome by the way do you remember them the Asperger's yeah. kid and his sister who oh. only like whispered to him i was like i want i want a movie about them yeah i thought i mean that was pretty entertaining cuz <laughs> cuz they were going to totally go for it too cuz they had the ice cream in the truck right right and and they mentioned oh you know all it came with all the ice cream at that point i literally thought that what would sway them from their life of crime would be starting to make a good living and being known around the neighborhood with this ice cream stuff. I really thought, oh, this is where they're going. Oh, that could have totally turned the story around. Yeah, and and I, I mean, it would have made them feel unnecessary, but uh, they already felt that way. So, you know. Yeah, they were they were pretty much patently unnecessary. The 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 rest of the story was the story and then I think I think you're right. They were just put in as as I don't know, maybe someone came in and was like, we don't have enough antagonism. Because they didn't make the um, the stepfather figure into the antagonist, which I thought maybe they might, because he was a little, like, it was hard to get a read on him. I wasn't quite sure. Yeah, yeah, he looked a lot like Patrick Wilson, and I think that's what did it for me, because I kept thinking maybe this would take kind of a hard candy turn. <laughs> L- luckily, or sadly, it did not. The, yeah, and, and so that whole thing... I love that his mom is, like, a slut. Like, she just turns into a slut once she decides to start dating again. Because we get, like, a montage of different guys right. coming over, and they're all from work. And so she's just like, I obviously have no bar set here, you know? I'll just take the first guy I run into in my daily routine. And it's really convenient that it ends up being the veterinarian oh, who, yeah, can, yeah, who yeah. can then help with Buddy. Right, of so course, of course. That's nice. Yeah, that was, uh, um, oh my god, that didn't feel contrived at all. Uh, mm -hmm. It just flowed naturally, like like it should. But yeah, they go through this like horrible montage. And I, I don't know, montage is probably not even the right word. They're just two contestants that we see. But the, yeah. but the first one leaves because he is allergic to dogs. Like, deathly allergic to dogs. And I'm, I'm, I mean, I get that it's a kid's movie and... Whoever's watching it doesn't understand dating, but I was just like, really? Like, he just and he left, left without saying anything. Right. Like, you would think he would just, like, at the most, stand outside or something. And also, if you're that deathly allergic to animals, you, you would think that you would mention beforehand, hey, you don't have any, like, dogs or cats at your place, do you? Because that's a common thing, especially... For a, a single mother, you know? Yeah, well, he also, I mean, he sneezed a couple times. If he were deathly allergic, he would have gone into, you know, anaphylactic shock. And that would have been a more entertaining movie. <laughs> and then Josh has to, like, shove a needle into his chest or something. Yeah, that would have been good. Yeah, I, I, I could have gone for that. Make and then, it a sort of mashup of, of Air Bud and Pulp Fiction. Then the, the second choice that we see gives a cheesy line... And and it just immediately everybody discounts him, and I'm like, this proves that literally she never spoke to him at work. I guess it must. Because if, if this was his personality, you would have known it long before the point where you're going on a date. And and so, like, literally, I feel as if she sent out an email blast at work and was like, hey, want to date <laughs> me? Here are my particulars, you know? We can, yeah. we can carpool. And... Uh, <laughs> And instead, she winds up with the veterinarian, which uh, is 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 wonderful, and everybody uh, everybody loves that. Except for Josh, who once the guy proposes marriage, runs away from home, which seemed like a rather drastic choice, but you know, whatever. Right. It it, it seemed very 
I'll, I'll use the word again. It seemed very contrived because it was strange how they had the moment earlier in the film where he fought with his feelings of like, I don't know if I'm okay with this. And then he was like, hey, mom, I want you to be happy. Then, yeah. then he gets to know the stepfather better and they are, you know, they seem to get along fine. The stepfather cares about him and Buddy and possibly his younger sister. I mean, she has like two lines in this movie. She she did have more lines than in the last movie, so that that works. Yeah, so there's there's that, but um, uh, but it just it it felt like that conflict was over, and then they were like, well, we don't really have any other conflicts, so let's just pull this out of a hat again. But then but then it did allow the coach to and Josh to have a heart to heart at the train station, and and that for some reason had something to do with it. Right, which which the coach was eating for. Yes, of course. He, oh, yes, of course. <laughs> He comes into the scene eating and leaves the scene asking if they can stop for pizza. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, as a fat man, I was somewhat offended. You know, I, I can see that. he Well, this, this guy was kind of, like, he was kind of shit on from the very beginning because at the very beginning, we find out, we, we meet this coach, and then we find out that the, the school supervisor, whoever, comes to him and says... You have two choices. We can either stop having a football team at the school or we fire you. Right. Those those are the two choices and like that does that does not give him a choice at all. And so <laughs> I just thought that was Right. It's it's too. a it's a Hobson's choice. That that woman by the way was Miss Pepper who replaced Miss Salter from the last movie. Well, it's a new school, right? They were in middle school this time or something. Oh, are they Junior they, high? they talk about being Junior in 8th grade, okay. but I I guess I just assume that it was that it was the same school, but no, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, eighth eighth grade when these girls become women, right? Right, right. Yeah, that's right. It was oh. that was very Matthew McConaughey from uh, Days to Confused. I thought, you know, only uh, it was this w- like this kid Tom. He was okay in the last movie. In this movie, he was creepy. He was definitely creepy, but I loved that that actor was like, "Hey, they gave me more lines. I am gonna act my." fucking hard out that's that's true it was entertaining he really threw himself into that role and really like made you want to feel i got a kind of a nightcrawler vibe from it you know not the x-man but the jake gyllenhaal movie oh i didn't see that neither neither have i yet miss pepper either replaced miss salter or they're in a new school also interesting the mom was different yet like every other actor apparently seemed the same so that was a little that was a little odd how was it a different actor Oh, yeah, yeah, the mom was different. Oh, she uh, looked pretty similar to me, at least. Really? Oh, yeah, her voice yeah. is totally different. Oh, going back to the eating. Eating, eating, eating. In this, in the last movie, Buddy was drawn to pain, and in this movie, he's drawn to food. Oh, that's true. He even uh, starts his interruption of the football game by eating a hot dog, right? Right, that's right. He, he, he like, literally follows Josh for, you know, like, half the town... And then is swayed by, oh, hot dog. Um, it really felt as if he just went halfway across town for a hot dog and then was like, oh, hey, look, Josh happens to be here. Cool. Well, it's probably more in character for a dog. <laughs> and they gave Buddy this horrific belch sound effect. Oh, yeah. When he would Okay, eat. there were a couple of stylistic notes I wanted to say. They did, they did that. They did a couple other, like, sort of... That seemed kind of like cartoony sort of elements. And the camera work. Did you notice the camera work, especially at the beginning? Yeah, the Was swirly. all the spinning and tilting yeah. and like wave, like all over the place. I didn't know what they were going for there. Right. Again, it's this odd mix. I, I think it was less bizarre than the first movie, but there was this odd mix of kind of over-the-top cartoonishness. Like, for mm-hmm. instance, the, the movie starts out with, Josh and, and the family go to a professional basketball game, and of course, Buddy, because he's a fucking ninja, follows, you know, goes the, like, 27 miles, is somehow able to get into the stadium, jumps out, and and starts, like, playing professional basketball with everyone, and knocking over shit, and blah, 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 and it's like, right. you would think there would be security or something, but everybody's just oh, like... Oh, yeah, but at the end, they take a picture instead with the whole team. Right, right. <laughs> Because everybody's like, oh, it's cool. And then it's never mentioned again. And the other thing I thought was odd about that, and this fits well with what I was starting to say earlier, is that we have these two different movies. We have the cartoonish element with the bad guys and with those sorts of scenes. And then it's like, next scene, my dad is dead. 
and uh, you have that kind of weird like it's trying to be mash or something just (laughs) where it's up down up down all the time and in in the same sense i i thought it was odd how like some people that they met knew who buddy was and then other people just had no idea and it's like well is he a celebrity or not you know i get that it's a minor celebrity but uh, it felt like this is a very small town and so people should know that you know perhaps the fact that he was a celebrity played into the fact that they didn't even mention it when he joined the football team no 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 one no one batted an eye it was Literally, like they they just let him start playing and it was fine. They like in the last movie they at least consulted the rule book or whatever, and then in this movie they didn't they didn't even mention it. Nobody cared. The other coach was just like, "Oh shit!" They put the dog in. <laughs> I think, and it, they turned, I... he turned the score around pretty pretty dramatically because they were it was something like ten to oh, I don't I don't I don't even know how the points work, but it was it was really low <laughs> score to a really high score, and then he turned the it sevens around. Sevens and threes. Yeah, yeah, something something like that. They didn't need to consult the rule book because the umpire or whatever the hell, the referee was the same as from the last movie. So, uh it it was uh the the actor's did you name notice? is Jay, Jay Brazo. Yeah, he's Did you notice they tried to make the two referees into like characters at the very end at the very last second? Yeah, that was that was a little odd. That was an odd choice, and I that's really when I noticed, oh, hey, it's Jay Brazo. Speaking of the end, oh, my God. <laughs> the football game that went on forever? Well, yeah, though I was expecting that. You know, I was like, okay, 20-minute right. 20 20 minute basketball game at the end of the first one. I guess we're looking at the same here, but Tim Conway and Dick Martin as the announcers. Okay, they were legitimately entertaining. I really, really enjoyed that. I guess, but I was like, what kids are like, oh, look, it's Dick oh. Martin of Rowan and Martin's Laughing. That's awesome. Okay, well, I, I don't know who they are. I just, they were just <laughs> they, really funny. Their interaction was really funny. They are classic comedians who had their heyday in like the late 60s. <laughs> oh. And I saw them and I thought, what the hell movie am I in right now? <laughs> They, I mean, w- literally, like, were they making the movie and they were like, oh, shit, we're going to lose the, like, 80-year-old's attention? We have to throw in some classic comedy duo. I mean, it was it was not quite up to Fred Willard and Best in Show, I don't think, but I assume... Well, it, and it didn't fit in the movie at all, but it, it was a refreshing change of pace because that last, that last game, I don't know, I, I wonder how long it took to film that because I think part, like, I think... Maybe the the uh, announcer thing and the referee thing might have just come from everybody just getting so bored trying to film this one football game. That could be. That very well could be that it was just by the end, everybody was like, oh, hey, I'll do something funny. Maybe it'll make it in the movie. Yeah. The moment that made me laugh in the film was not actually Tim Conway or Dick Martin, but it was the singing of the national anthem by Ms. Pepper or Salter, whichever one it was in this movie. Yeah, that was that was something. Which I assume was a reference to Roseanne Barr singing the national anthem. So I looked that up. That was eight years before this movie came out. So I was like, if this is a reference, your target audience is not going to get it. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think so. I thought it was. I, I this whole character. What was her name again? Either Salter or Pepper. Yeah, like, I, I don't know how they were trying to make her come across, but yeah, she was kind of all over the place. But yeah, her si- her singing, quote unquote, singing the national anthem. Did you see how she like hid her face in shame after it was done? No, I, I missed that. Oh, that that actually happened. Like she she screamed out the anthem and then she and then she hid her face while the camera was still on her. I think it might have been an accident. I'm not entirely <laughs> sure. Like, maybe they were just getting warmed up or something, and they were like, we need to test the mic, and so she did it as a joke, and then and then they were like, right. that's making it in. Speaking of Tim Conway and, and the references that are way too old, at one point the coach uses the phrase razzle-dazzle, and I just was like, oh my god, this movie has old man-itis just all over it. It feels like an 80-year-old pendant, like, this is what the kids like, right? That might have been what happened. I mean, it's not like... They had uh, the the fresh new talent coming in for this movie. <laughs> that, well, I, I I guess that's true. Most of the talent was I, I guess the only real fresh new talent was the vet, right? 
Yeah, I guess so. And and the new buddies, of course. Right, right. Uh, before they were taken in their prime. Speaking of uh, kind of little moments that you might have missed, I swear at one point during that giant final football scene, I think it's when they're coming onto the field, pretty sure one kid just punches another in the face. I think they're like going to high five and one kid just punches another. There was a little bit of violence out there that nobody commented on. And I just, I see, and I don't know the rules of football, so I don't know what's allowed in the game or not. I think not this. <laughs> yeah, probably not. That's the answer. Speaking of what's allowed in the game or not, did you, did you like how during that opening basketball sequence, Buddy is like literally running across tables, knocking shit over left and right, doing horrible things all over the place, eating stuff and belching loudly, and the game just keeps going on? Oh, yeah, and everybody cheers also. Right. It, it, Everybody's just cheering and nobody's upset. It's 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 just, it's entertaining and let's take a picture of them. I, I assume because they recognize, oh, it's Air Bud, but maybe not. It's, it's, it's really up in the air about that. Yeah, I mean, he's supposed to be this small town hero and they were like at an actual game for like an actual team. So I don't know. Did you notice that, like, during that montage with the different possible father figures, the little sister disappears? She's kind of Schrodinger's sister in this film. <laughs> She's there yeah. for some scenes when it's really important, then for others when it would seem like, who's watching her? She's just gone. Again, like, it was it was kind of, they, they just kind of tossed her in there for those couple lines, and then when she wasn't saying those, she basically just didn't exist anymore. Right, which is okay if you're dealing with, say, a best friend in a romantic comedy because we assume they have their own lives, but it's like, this girl's six or some shit. Like, she needs attention. She can't... She It's, it's not like she's just at the mall or something. <laughs> right. Did you notice in Josh's garage, which, like, literally the garage is just littered with stuff that was his father's, which is a little creepy that they're like... Oh, I didn't notice that. Yeah. I mean, that that ties into the whole complex about him not wanting his mom to marry again. Right. Although, I, I just, I really don't think they, they... They just made it seem like... I don't know. They were so ambiguous about what the conflict was because... They, he yeah. didn't dislike the, the yeah. dude, and he didn't, like, he wasn't angry at his mother. Like, he, there was no conflict there right up until he ran away from home. Yeah, then he hugs him at the end to show that everything is okay, and I felt that was a little weird. Yeah, I was... especially because, it I mean, it changed the whole ending, right? Because he wasn't going to stay and, and marry her. Yeah, I was like, well, now he's going to call and be like, well, you know, I said I was going to take the job. <laughs> Whoops. It, it did also seem a little strange that he was like, no, I'm just going to go. Fuck it. Well, also, too, he was going to San Diego by boat. Like, <laughs> he was, I, did, he, did he pack up all his things and was just going to float on down to San Diego? It, it was, like, it was, was, a, that it was a pretty big boat. I, I mean, <laughs> I guess, yes, right? That That's doable. The the sure. thing the thing that I was going to mention about the garage, you know, all of his father's stuff was there. That's where the the basketball and and I, the wreckage of the plane, I assume, was there. <laughs> but there was also a like a, a tennis hat that said "Daddy" on it, <laughs> oh. which I thought some props person was like, <laughs> I don't know what the hell to put in here. Hey, this hat says "Daddy" on it. That's that's good, right? <laughs> Daddy, the movie's about fathers, right? Right. right. Well, it's it's this garage of stuff that was his father's. He probably wore a hat that proclaimed he was daddy. <laughs> so, Marisha, yes, you know what happens after four dates, don't you? <laughs> you know, I thought I knew until I saw this movie, and then I found out that it was different from what I thought. I really, really was like, say anal, say anal. <laughs> But I I could not like when that question happened, I could not imagine that it was anything other than a than a sexual innuendo and I was shocked that the that they had gone for it. Right. And and I thought uh, first I thought say anal, but then I was like, you know, my mind is immediately thinking how are they going to get out of this? Is it going to be some badly misunderstood sexual innuendo like in Rushmore when he's like, oh, they were in the back room giving each other hand jobs, you know, and, and something like that. But what could they do? But no, this this is this is what this is what happens after four dates. They get put on speed dial. Right. Which, Which 
It doesn't even make sense anymore. It was, I, I literally had to think for a moment because I was like, well, of course she has his number. Like, how else is she going to text him about it? And I was like, oh, God, this movie is pretty damn old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we picked an older one, I guess. Speaking of romantic subplots, Josh still did not quite get a romantic subplot, but his friend, the creepy guy, did. For for two scenes, like there was the first scene where he wanted this girl to turn into a woman, and then the the scene at the end where he has potential, like yeah. she says he has potential. Yeah, and I could not stop thinking of the killers there, uh, Mr. Brightside. Uh, oh yeah. It's it's almost as if he got Josh's romantic subplot from the first movie, then they remembered to put an ender on it. Uh huh. But Josh is, I I think he's committed to buddy i you know i think so like we even saw that in the in the last movie a little bit where where all of his attention where it could it could go towards a romantic direction no he he wants his dog right right a boy and his dog Uh, a boy and his sexy sexy dog (laughs) that his his best friend wanted to put tammy on speed dial i think that's uh that's what was going on there Mm -hmm. It, it was interesting speaking of the kids in general it was interesting noting that in the last movie, all the adults were idiots. In this movie, all the kids were idiots. But at least they're not, like, jerks for no reason like they were in the last movie. That's true, but they are... They're bad spy kids. They're not very good football players. They're (laughs) wishy-washy about whether they like people or not when they're dating their mom. They're, you know, (laughs) they disappear if they're under 10 for days on end. They're just, they leave the garage door open. They are, they're bad, they're really idiot kids. And I can't, I can't say that enough. The kids are idiots. Well, maybe, I don't know. Maybe they're more true to life. I don't know. I don't know most, I don't know many kids. Why are we even watching this movie? Like, why am I watching this movie? I am not, I don't know anything about children. (laughs) Because your love of the game, Marisha. Your love (laughs) of the game. All right, the game. The game. So, Marisha, we've now come to our final segment, something that we're instituting here. All right. The idea is, if you could change one thing about this movie, one thing that you could change that would have saved this movie and made it more of a classic. I don't know about making it more of a classic, but I think it would have made the movie better if they'd taken the antagonists and because they'd given them such a such a shitty role in the movie by not having them do anything, give them a really spectacular death scene. <laughs> that's 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 what would have made the movie for me. Gotcha. I think it could have become a cult classic at least if nothing else. If they had used Buddy's taxidermied corpse rather than the four replacement <laughs> Buddy dogs, there we go. And that then they then the villains could have taken like kidnapped or stolen the dog for their like side side show, like their freak show instead of like a zoo. There you go. Like it, 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 it would have been be perfect. a petting zoo. Pet the dead wonder dog. Yes, exactly. No, I, I, that could work too, but I was thinking more just literally have the exact same movie, except it's obviously a dead stuffed dog for every scene. <laughs> I kind of want to recreate the entire movie with that now. That would be, would be great. At least a diorama of the football scene. <laughs> right. All right. Well, that's, that's, that's enough about Airbud, Wide Retriever, or whatever the hell it's called for now. Uh, this is Michael D. Bradley. This is Marisha Parker. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I want to remind everybody, if you have feedback, if you watch this movie, if you think we missed something big, if you want to add to the conversation, feel free to write to info at iceonmars.net. Bye. You have been listening to Ice on Mars.